Mr. Veter, roll call, please. Leyland? Here. Little? Here. Schwartz? Here. White? Here. Magsman? Here. Take a moment of silence to reflect on actions. Please join us in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> First item uh, so is the agenda received as proposed or amended. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, motion carried. Uh, it's our honor now to uh, recognize the Columbus High State Champion Girls Volleyball Team. If uh, we could have uh, individuals, uh, the uh, players, uh, stand up and introduce themselves. If you come forward, and maybe we could have a little... Uh, uh, overview of how the season went. Girls, we please stand. <laughs> there we go. Thank you, everyone, for welcoming us uh, to. If you, we we appreciate if you come over by the mic so the public can hear you. Thank you, everyone, for welcoming us to the Board of Supervisors meeting this morning. At this time, I'd like to ask each of the girls to come forward and to share their name and grade and then one of our seniors on Ortiz will share some information on our season. Thank you. I'm Anna Sennett and I'm a senior this year. I'm Lily Christensen and I'm a senior. I'm Kate Shannon and I'm a junior. I'm Hannah Clawson and I'm a senior. I'm Avery Kroll and I'm a uh, sophomore. <laughs> I'm Megan Knudsen and I'm a sophomore. I'm Emma Purdy, and I'm a sophomore. I'm Emily Serma, and I'm a sophomore. I'm Sydney Schultz, and I'm a junior. And I'm Julia Benda, and I'm a junior. I'm Anna Ortiz, and I'm a senior, and we'd like to thank you all for uh, letting us come here to celebrate our victory. Um, a few highlights of our season. We went 35-8 and eight this year, which um, one of our goals was to be under 10 losses, so we're really proud of that achievement. Um, we got first place in three tournaments, which is also one of our goals. And we've just had a really successful season. We got to play in the conference championship for the first time. Even though we lost, it was still an honor to be in that championship. And we played against a team and held up with them that actually won the 2A state final. So we we're really proud of that. And obviously, our first state championship for our school. So we're really, really proud of that. And we'd like to thank, on behalf of our team, we'd like to thank our coach and everyone in our families who pushed us to get where we were. And we couldn't have done it without all their support. So thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. We do, we do have a plaque, and uh, representative want to come up, and uh, we present this to the uh, 2017 state volleyball champions, Columbus High School. And we'd also like to do a, a group photograph, so if you would all come, kind of stand in front of the, the podium here and group yourselves together. I think with uh, all the underclassmen, we probably have a good opportunity for you to be here next year. Coach, you need to get coach. Yeah. Coach. There you go. You guys are used to it. Yeah. Right. That's good. Are you ready? Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Coach. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, this is the time in our meeting to um, take public comments for any item that is not on the agenda. If you have an item you wish to address the board that is not on the agenda, please do so now. Seeing none, we move on to claims and payments. 
Um, item A is the approval of expenditures for the county. The county's expenditures this week total $324,072.07, 324,072.07. That includes about $150,000 on the radio project and $55,000 in CIP projects for conservation. <clears throat> Move to approve. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Hearing none, this is a resolution. Please answer your names called. Leyland? Yes. Little? Yes. Short? Yes. White? Yes. Magsman? Yes. Next item B is the approve the expenditures for Country View facility. Country View's expenditures <coughs> this week total $67,848.87. Six seven eight four eight point one seven uh, uh, point eight seven. Excuse me. Motion for approval. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Mm -hmm. Hearing none. Please answer as your name is called. Little. Yes. Schwartz. Yes. yes. White. Yes. Leland. Yes. Magsman. Yes. Resolution approved. <laughs> Item five is receive <coughs> project updates from department heads, elected officials. Good morning, board. Kathy Nicholas, county engineer. Good morning. Uh, our maintenance crews are out cutting brush this week in the good weather, <laughs> and we are also doing some repairs to the Cedar Wapsie uh, River Bridge. So this is the same bridge that we'll be replacing in uh, just a few years. Some of the expansion joints are, are uh, causing some issues right now. Uh, I wanted to let you know that we have received a preliminary engine re engineering report from our structural engineering consultants on that East Bennington Road Bridge. This was the structure that we had to close about a month and a half ago. Uh, we are looking at that and we'll be coming uh, back to you uh, soon for recommendations and how you uh, uh, wish to proceed with that. Can I answer any questions at this time? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Let's see any. We move on to Minutes approved of November 21st. So, second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, motion carried. Item seven is the consent agenda so this by second. a single resolution. We have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, um, please answer as your name is called. Short? Yes. <coughs> Excuse me. White? Yes. Leyland? Yes. Little? Yes. Magsman? Yes. Resolution approved. Item 8 uh, reports an update from Ben Delagardell, Urban Services, uh, reference the Washburn Sanitary Sewer. Good morning, Ben. Good morning. Good morning. I'm here to update for two months worth. It will be September and October. First, I want to take care of some old business. Frank, last team, last time I was here, you asked me for pump inventory number. Normally, I give that to you. Um, 14 pumps, good and ready to go. One of those is a brand new extreme pump. One of those is a rebuilt extreme pump, and 12 of those are rebuilt 2000 series pumps. <clears throat> for September, we did monitoring of water flow and lagoon cell levels. Submitted the MOR to the DNR for August operations. Collected a quarterly influence sample and submitted to the lab as required by the NPDES permit. We mowed the lagoon on 915. We had six locates and one service call for September. Moving on to October, again, we did monitoring water flow and lagoon cell levels, submitted the MOR to the DNR, collected a pre drawdown sample in preparation of our discharge. <coughs> We mowed the lagoon area on 1015. Started the fall discharge on October 22nd. After that, we collected a drawdown sample as required by DNR on 1025, third day of discharge. Maintained the discharge through the end of the month. We had four locates and one service call in October. Any questions? Concerns? <laughs> Uh, any board members? Oh, thank you, Ben. Well, one thing I do have for you guys is, is there an update with the fats, oil, and grease um, issue? I think it's been four or five months since we've talked about that. Update in regards to what? Uh, 
Do we have inspections happening in town? As far as I know, Rory, the um, they've been doing inspections, correct? Yeah, the local inspector for uh, City of Waterloo has been out to sure. uh, at least two establishments out there in Washington. And we've been doing it for the last few years, ever since we had a problem. Okay. You Sounds were good. just asking for an up update standpoint. Yeah, if we're yeah basically to make sure it's still, still going. Once you get contact of the individual that's doing the inspections, you can talk to him directly then. Okay. I'll get a hold of Rory. Did the uh, get the fence repaired? It's not it's not repaired. I had to order the correct fence that looks the same. Um, I contacted Rory to try and find some that the county was already in possession of. We didn't have any, so I did order some. So as soon as I have that, it'll get fixed. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Item B is a motion that the recorder's report and fee collection from Sandy Smith County Recorder for the period of October 1st, 2017 so through October 31st, 2017 be received, placed on file with the county auditor. Any discussion? Um, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, motion carried. Have contracts and agreements. Uh, a is resolution that the agreement between Blackhawk County and Allen Hospital Health for um, discount rates for pre employment screening be approved and direct chair to sign for same as recommended by Debbie Bunger, Human Resource Director. So moved. Second. Have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Hearing none, this resolution, please answer as your name is called. White? Yes. Leland? Yes. Little? Yes. Work? Yes. Magsman? Yes. Item B, a resolution at the agreement between Blackhawk County and the City of Janesville for resurfacing Waverly Road from Sycamore Road to 885 feet north at a cost of not to exceed $19,000 be approved and direct. The chair to sign for same as recommended by Kathy Nicholas, County Engineer. So moved. Second. Motion second. Kathy, any additional information on this? Sure. This is a, a portion of our resurfacing of Waverly Road uh, next year. Should take place in the summer of 2018. We will be resurfacing from the Cedar Falls city limits to the Janesville city limits. As you know, we share approximately 1,300 uh, linear feet with them. That northernmost portion we share with them. This was an agreement which their uh, city council agreed that they would participate and not to exceed uh, $19,000. Our estimates are $18,000 to $20,000 for their portion of the work. Is there, um, when you're resurfacing uh, in the county, you're adding an additional three feet onto the paving? Yes. Mm -hmm. So on our portion, we will be, uh, we now have a three or four foot short gravel shoulder along Waverly Road. We will be paving three feet shoulder on each side of the road. When we get to the Sycamore Street, we will stop that paving of the shoulders and we will just pave the main line. The city of Janesville did not want to participate in that portion of the project. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Um, this is a resolution. Please answer as your name is called. Leyland? Yes. Little? Yes. Schwartz? Yes. White? Yes. Axman? Yes. I see is a resolution at the land lease between Blackhawk County and Frederick Weber for three year <coughs> lease agreement in the amount of thirty three or $3.33 ,33 for county so owned move. lots, uh, formerly known as 66. One nine Sunnyside Street and Laporte be approved. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion on this? Hearing none, all those are please answer as your name is called. Little? Yes. Schwartz? Yes. White? Yes. Leyland? Yes. Maxman? Yes. Item D is resolution at the land lease between Blackhawk County and Frederick Weber. 
for a three-year lease agreement in the amount of three dollars and thirty-three cents for county-owned uh, vacant lots, and this is formerly known as six six one one Sunnyside Street, Laporte. Uh, be approved and direct chair signed for same. So moved. Second. Motion and second. Any discussion? Hearing none. This is a resolution. Please answer as your name is called. Short. Yes. White. Yes. Leland. Yes. Little. Yes. Magsman. Yes. Item E is resolution at the land lease between Blackhawk County and Frederick Weber for the three year lease agreement for the amount of three dollars and thirty three cents be second. approved and direct chairs signed for same. And this is at six six one two Sunnyside Street, Laporte City. Any discussion? Hearing none, this is a resolution. Please answer as your name is called. White? Yes. Leland? Yes. Little? Yes. Work? Yes. Maxman? Yes. <clears throat> Item 10, um, other business, motion to direct the county finance director to advertise for a public hearing <clears throat> to be held at 9.05 a.m. on Tuesday, December 19, 2017, in the boardroom 201 of the Blackhawk County Courthouse, 316 East 5th Street, Waterloo, Iowa, on the proposed fiscal year 18 budget amendments. So moved. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those please all those in favor please indicate aye. 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 All those opposed, motion carried. Uh, our next item uh, under other business is item B and discussion options for Whedon Road. Good morning, board. Kathy Nicholas, again, Good county morning. engineer. And I wanted to uh, go over some of the options for Wyden Road with you. I know um, Supervisor Schwartz had asked for some historical perspective of this road as well as the, what the Code of Iowa says about how we can uh, reclassify or designate our roads. So I have some of that information. I first wanted to present what the Code of Iowa says about the different types of, of roads in our road system. And technically, if you look in the Code of Iowa, they're called area class area service classifications, and there's three area service classifications. Here in Iowa, there's class A, or excuse me, area service A, area service B, and area service C. Area service A roads, those are our typical county roads that those are maintained with it with all, in conformance with all standards and specifications. We build those to specifications. The signing is meeting specifications, pavement markings. The next step below that would be area service B, and that, of course, would be a lesser level of maintenance, and I'll get into more of what that means in just a minute here. And then finally, area service C roads, those are roads that can be restricted access, primarily with a gate and then we can designate who has keys to that gate. <clears throat> and the Iowa Department of Transportation, they give us, they give local agencies, cities and counties, we get our guidance from the Code of Iowa through them, through an instructional memorandum. So there's, there's very good guidance from the Iowa DOT on what it takes to 
change these service levels as well as what it takes to vacate a road here in Iowa. So just very briefly, Area Service B roads, they have to be designated by an ordinance or a resolution. Mm. They are required to have appropriate warning signs at the beginning of the road, for example, and this is a common example of what that signing can look like. And these would be put up <laughs> at, at both ends of that road. Uh, so there's no regular maintenance performed on area service B roads. There's no blading, there's no snow and ice removal. We will not be applying any surfacing. Virtually no maintenance to those roads. We do have several miles of area service B roads here in Black Hawk County. Uh, about seven years ago, we, the Board of Supervisors did designate this portion of Wyden Road from Riding House Road to the airport vicinity as a Class B road. Additionally, at that time, McKellar Road was also classified as the class, <laughs> class B road. McKellar Road is just right around the corner from, from Wyden Road. Those are each less than a mile in length. And we also have another mile that is classified as the area service B, and that's down um, south of Hudson on Petrie Road from Holmes Road to Acker Road. So we have a, a little under three miles of service B road here in Black Hawk County. Uh, t moving on to the area C service roads. Uh, again, we are required to put up a sign. Uh, this can only be take place by resolution by the Board of Supervisors. In this case, we, we install a gate. The county purchases the gate, we install the gate, and then we have notified landowners, adjoining landowners, those people affected that there would be a gate put up. We can give keys to individuals who would like to access that or who have land behind the gate. Uh, emergency services, the sheriff, our maintenance crews, we would all have keys as well. And we do have a little under one mile of an area service C road here in Black Hawk County. This is in the Janesville vicinity. Uh, it was established in the spring of 2011, uh, and that was primarily because the resident was uh, experienced dumping on that road as, as well as people trans trespassing on their property to get to a county conservation area named Fisher Forest. And at that time, the Black Hawk County Conservation Board did support this, this gating of this road to, to uh, restrict access back to this uh, conservation area. There's currently a parking lot in that area, and you can walk around the gate to this get to this access. This isn't where the rock quarry is, is it? No. no. This would be, it's on Marquis Road, which is a county line road with Bremer and Blackhawk. Years and years ago, we had a bridge that crossed the Shell Rock River there, but that was abandoned and removed at least 10 years ago and people would continue to walk through there and drive through there and to get access to the fishing area. That is still allowed. Pedestrian access is allowed, but there is no more dumping of trash and that type of debris. And the Code of Iowa does uh, give cities, counties, does give counties liability when we designate these roads as area service B and C. Uh, says that we are not liable for injuries to any person or damage to any vehicle or equipment. Uh, moving on to a, a, a county vacation. So this is where the county is giving up all uh, ownership rights to this piece of property, to this road. Uh, again, this is codified in, in Iowa law. Um, we are given pretty good guidance on this from the Iowa DOT. The public hearing process must be followed. Uh, resolution must be passed to vacate all of it, none of it, or a portion of it, for example. Um, we can, the county can re agree to remove drainage structures or we can leave those in place and they would just be given over to the landowners then, basically. Um, in the past, or there is court precedence that shows if people do have uh, access cut off, there is a provision for us to pay damages. That, isn't always the case, but that there is a consideration for that in the Code of Iowa. And then lastly, the utilities 
would still retain all would still retain a permanent easement to that area if, if that's what they desire we have had a recent vacation here in Blackhawk County this was approximately in uh, 2011 it was a I think this was a class B before this happened but you can see it was just a dirt road uh, there was a lot of people excuse me there was some mudding taking place there was a lot, a lot of debris garbage being dumped onto this this road the landowners uh, came to the board or came to the engineer and asked requested that this road be vacated we followed the vacation process and it was vacated about six years ago and today the road has been obliterated and of course the, there's farming through the road today and at that time in 2009 the da average daily traffic on that route was 20 vehicles per day so just to zero in more on the road we're talking about today this would be Wyden Road and it's approximately from Rotting House Road which is up here at the top of the page down to the vicinity of the airport we have done locates with our with utilities and along this corridor as, as near as we can tell there are no active utilities along this corridor the average daily traffic count from the latest DOT count which was in 2014 it's approximately 15 vehicles per day and I also wanted to point out that the distance between Wyden Road here and Golanvo Road which are parallel routes that's approximately 1900 feet so it's it's much closer than our than our one mile grid system just to talk for a minute about the history of the problem there of course have been uh, numerous instances of mutters in the past there's been a history of mutters getting out onto the airstrip and damaging doing damage to the airport and some of our uh, guests could speak about that as well so as I said it was vacated in 2010 since that time we have done virtually no maintenance on the route just due to the wetness of the area a lot of uh, trees have grown up in the area we have done very little to to cut those back to keep those cut on an annual basis we're spending maybe four or five hours a year uh, maintaining this road approximately two hundred and fifty dollars to maintain it and it could be more in times of flooding for example and I'll show you a few photos of this so as you know I have sent out some letters in September uh, the request for uh, the vacation or looking at our options for Wyden Road this time was coming from our was coming from me from the maintenance department from myself so in response to that I sent out letters in September <coughs> uh, wanting to gather uh, public opinion from the residents in the area on their opinion of vacating or what are our options on Whedon Road uh, I did hear back from several people uh, for example Ms. Cindy Crow I talked to her just last week she owns a home on Millerdale Road uh, her family is in the military so she's not there all the time but she, they do go back and visit frequently she liked the idea of leaving uh, Wyden Road open because it's a sand road it's not as dusty as Golanvo Road uh, it saves time getting to Washburn she told me and <clears throat> you would have to go out of the way you would have to travel north on East Chalice Road and go over to 218 that way uh, she was concerned about more traffic if you did have to make that circuitous route and then you wanted to come back to go to Gilbertville that there would be more uh, traffic turning on highway 218 at the Washburn Road intersection Kathy just to interrupt a second yes. where did you say she lived or what is her address her her address the home she owns is on is at 4627 Millerdale Court and her daughter actually lives in the house she herself is living in Texas now just due to being in the military right now okay, thank you and I have also heard back from Mary Kay Fishbach and Joe Otava 
that they would also like to see the road left open. Um, they express concerns about uh, flooding. In times of flooding, they see that as a, a better way to leave, the, leave their home. And they live uh, north of the Rotting House Gallenville area. I have heard from um, several residents who expressed an interest in closing the road. For example, the Westers and the Jorgensons, they live south of the airport on Wyden Road. They have been impacted by the flooding, and so they, they offer good firsthand accounts of how much flooding there is during, during high water events, and I have some photos here. Um, of course, I've heard from the farmers who farm that portion of Wyden Road. The riding houses, they tell me that they can access their fields on the east side of Wyden Road, they tell me that that is accessible from Gollenville Road or from Rotting House Road if we were to vacate the road. And then I have heard back from Mr. Gary Birch. He um, manages the airport, owns the airport on the east side of Wyden Road. And some of these folks are here today and I'm sure they would like to say, um, say something. I, I also heard from a Ms. Alma Huck, and she told me that in times of high water that she, the first place she goes is the, the Cedar Valley Nature Trail to get to her home. She drives right up the Nature Trail, and she would live north of, of uh, the, as the trail intersects Widen Road, she lives north of that, just north of that portion. Um, I did want to show you some photos of what Wyden Road looks like. It, the flooding on Wyden Road is very similar to what happens on Rotting House. It's coming from the east side of Wyden Road. Um, the flooding can take place very quickly. This is one of the, the neighbors who uh, gave me this account of <coughs> how quickly the flooding can happen. Uh, but you can see it's so flat out there, it just inundates a lot of, a lot of the area. It inundates uh, the hangars, the airfield, uh, in particular, as well as to the north, up to Rotting House Road. So this was taken in the fall of 2016. Uh, a few more photos from 2008, and you can see there's extensive flooding in that vicinity. So here's a photo of the road, and this portion is south of the hangars. <clears throat> This portion would remain open, so I do envision that if we did have another large uh, rainfall event or flooding event, we, we would be repairing this road in this portion of it, just because that is south of the hangar, and we know there's residents right next to this, and uh, people need to come and go to get to the airport. Uh, some more damage after the flooding. And this was a photo taken in in the fall of 2016. Now this is on the parallel route, Gollenbo, and the water is coming from, like to the right of this road, it's coming from the Cedar River and flowing to the left towards Wyden Road. So we did receive um, some damage in 2016, not, not as extensive as in 2008. Uh, here's a photo in the winter, of course we, we don't, as I said, we don't do any uh, maintenance of the road, we don't plow the road <clears throat> north of the airport. So I would ask you for your consideration of uh, vacation of Wyden Road. Um, I'd like to have some of the, uh, the our um, guests, if they would be given a chance to. First, if any of the board members have any questions. Well, the writing house is here. I don't, I don't see them. And the reason I asked, I believe Joe, the last two times, was in favor of not closing it. So I was curious what changed his mind, if I remember correctly. That, that's correct from what I've, from speaking with him. And what a question, what's the benefit of closing it versus just classifying it as a sea road and, and gating it off and giving people the keys that would need access occasionally? So if we consider this compared to perhaps our last Area service C, where we did put the gate up. That, as I said, at one time there was a bridge at that location. It's a crossing over the Shell Rock River. It has more of a, maybe a 
a future potential need to be used as a road again. Maybe there would be some development in that area in the future, and maybe we would find money to build a new bridge some, at some point in the future. Wyden Road, in my opinion, is a different case because we have that other road just 2,000 feet or 1,900 feet to the east of it. There are two parallel routes. Th that's closer than any spacing of our roads in the county. The, the fact that it's so sandy and we do would have to do quite a bit of maintenance concerning the trees in the next few years to keep it open is, is our concern, that it's not, it's, it's not really a needed route. Can we have a BSC road that we don't do any of that maintenance on? And if we're not required to by code? So I, I guess I would consider that the future needs for Wyden Road are that we, we don't have any future needs for Wyden Road, whereas... Why, why not? Go ahead. I'll let you finish. Uh, <laughs> I guess I can... I, there's really no... Um, right now, both sides of the road are farmed. It's so low. It's, it, it floods quite a bit. I can't see development or any type of future use for the, the road other than agriculture. The landowners on both sides of Wyden have told me that they have access to those fields from, from other means. So it just seems like it's not, it's not needed mm -hmm. at this time, so, or in the future. So okay. let's eliminate some of the nuisance, people driving in and out of there, um, d destroying private property. Right. If we were to vacate it, would we be putting up a gate anyways, though? To so that's a good question. We, when we would, if we would vacate it, we would put bar barricades at the north and the south end, and it would look just like, um, for example, a, a dead end, for example, when our gravel roads were cut right. off by Interstate uh, 380 or 20. Mm -hmm. There's large barricades at the ends of that road. That's what we would do. We would leave access, a field entrance at the north end, mm -hmm. as well as the south end and then we would have the barricade. Why would we put barricades on private land? So we would... If we vacate it, then it's their piece of property and do what they want with it. Yes, we, we would write the legal description so that we can put up the barricade. We would have the field entrances on county property or accessible off the county road. Then we would put the barricades on county property. Then we would write the the legal description so that the vacation so the barricades fall under the Iowa code listed for no liability under class C even though it's not a class C road anymore I guess what I'm getting at would the county have any liability with those barricades I I would say no I mean we have dozens of barricades at ends of roads here or throughout Blackhawk County I don't think our our liability would be any more than it is with those so you're saying roads. we wouldn't have any liability right okay. and then a couple of the other reasons too you cited <laughs> dumping of garbage and yes. mutters um this is class b right now yes so can we reason then that there's no dumping at all on other roads in blackhawk county or no mutters only <laughs> on class b roads would that be a fair assumption so there are mutters occasionally throughout the county. Perhaps the sheriff is, is more qualified to speak on that than myself. We, the dumping of garbage, yes, that takes place all over, all over the county. county. I agree. And mutters go all over in the fields all over Blackhawk County, regardless what type of a road it is. I don't know how much they go on to private property. I don't hear about those types of instances. Morning, board. Morning. Morning. Uh, Wayne Even, secondary road superintendent. Uh, that road seems to be a hot spot for the four wheelers, but it's just a good through road, so they know there's easy way in and an easy way out if they make it through. Um, Possibility of somebody that lives in the area. To me, it's some of the kids maybe coming out of town or local kids that that know it's a good hot spot for so four wheeling. You don't think they're going to go around the barricade? I don't think so. No, I mean, it's a possibility. They they always 
seem to go around barricades wherever yeah. we put them up. What about the barricades we had up on the road when we cemented, put that cement in, they went right around that <clears throat> yeah. cement, so what's the difference? They could, but if we vacate it and the farmer turns it back to farmable ground, I don't think that's going to happen. What about, um, what about the lady that lives there that's got a concern about getting out during flooding? Don't we care about this, it? We do, but the thing is, when it's flooding, it's raining, and when it's raining, that road is mud. And you cannot get through it. That road has been the first uh, eight months of this year. You couldn't get down that road. It was just mud, and, and the trees were bad, and, I've and we had to wait till it dried up before we could even get down. I had quite a long visit with her, and she said that she—that's her only way out during a flood, because that that other way. And why not? If we're looking at that, why not close Golem Ball too? Or why aren't we looking at Golem Ball rather than this one? You said Golem Ball is dusty. This one isn't dusty. They're both dusty. Well, <laughs> yeah. One's a dirt road and one's a gravel road. Right. Well, Golem Ball is a gravel road that we maintain. We, we plow so it. dustier. We place rock. It is yeah. dustier, but yeah. is Golem like say eight, eight months out of the year, you can't get down the road. Either, you know, we have all the spring floods and, and all the rain and everything, and, and there's holes and dips and it just holds the water and we can't get rid of it. We just have to wait till it dries up before we can go in there and blade it. And my biggest thing with this whole deal too is that um, the trees in there, we need to either eradicate the trees and if we do that, we're gonna have to spend ten, fifteen thousand dollars $15,000 and I can't see the taxpayers wanting to spend ten dollars to $15,000 for me to go in there and grub the trees out. And the trees are right beside the road. If they'd have been maintained earlier, we wouldn't have had to do that. Exactly, but I'm maintaining all the other gravel roads and not the level B. We've, we've got time to do the ditches for other people. Why don't we have time to take care of those trees? I, I don't have the time to get it done. Do you um, cut trees on other roads that are Class B? No. I, th I thought we, we didn't do any work on Class B. Over on McKellar Road, uh, Nutrijet's been trimming all the trees, so we yeah, haven't they, touched them. Because they're going out in the field. Nutrijet. They, they've uh, going out in the field as. Their business, don't they? Mm -hmm. Yes. Spread out there yes. in that area. Yes. Kathy, how many? Uh, you said you're going to maintain the lower half by the airport, the road. How many vehicles use that a day? Mr. Wester, who lives on that road, just that he can answer that. The, the ADT map from the DOT said 15, but they do not put a, that is from extrapolation that they get that number. They didn't put a counter across wide road. The DOT doesn't put counters on every single road. They just do um, algorithms and come up where they Where are they going to? Are they using the widened road, that 15, or are they going to the airport? On a, on a good day? You're going to see cars going to the airport. Okay, that could possibly be the five or ten going past the airport on a good day. Could, could One, you please give your name? And Dwayne Lester, 6911 Whedon Road. Who um, is who goes to the airport that meant that many? There's times probably ten airplanes out there that fly. Okay. So, um, but on a good day, there's one car that might come through this level B part on a good day, unless it rains. Then you're going to see all the kids coming, and they're going to check it out. Um, and as far as you know, they've got it made because they got three different exits out there, so they don't have to worry about getting caught. They can just it, they don't have to turn around and come back through. Um, they've tore up the airport. They've tore up my neighbor's yards. We've got trees. Makes it kind of hard for them to get into my yard. Um, but you honestly think this is going to stop them from tearing up yards or airports? They don't have, they don't have an out. I mean, they went over the, the, around the one barricade and on the cement. Correct, Craig? I don't know. Well, you asked the county guy about that, said what's going to stop them from going around the barricades? Yeah, what's mm -hmm. going to stop them? Okay, they did it one time there. Are they going to, how many times are they going to go around barricades through farmer fields? Right now they're doing it because it is a, road 
That's the only reason they're using it. What's on each side of the barricade if if we put the barricade up? Farmland would be there. Okay, there's no ditch or nothing, it's just farmland. Yeah, it would be it would be farmland. So they'd be able to go around the barricade and it'd be in a farmer's field. No different than they can go around any Yeah, that's what I'm saying. No but, but, the, right but they now. don't. I mean, it, it it's not the same. It, it is a road now. They can go out there and actually use it as a road, they think. Um, <laughs> as far as getting out during the flooding, if a person has an option to take a gravel road versus a mud sand road, which road are you going to use when they both flood at the exact same time? Doesn't make sense to go down the mud and sand to me. Is your chances of getting out are a whole lot less likely. The lower half that you want to keep open, that's how much? How many feet? About 2,000 feet. What's that cost to maintain that yearly? Do we plow it? We plow it. Um, we go down. We don't go clear down. We just go to the hangar. Uh, the road would go another 1,000 feet. That, and we would not maintain that during the winter. Is that the portion we had to repair in the flood in 08? Right by the airport we did. How much was that? Do you have any idea to remember? I, I did not go back and take those not, rock tickets. No, it, there was probably no material that we added or anything. It was probably just taking the machine in there and pushing it back into the hole that, that it created. So. And one of the neighbors... I'm not sure if it was you, Mr. Wester. You had one of the neighbors did say that we did. They did see the county placing some rock back on the road after the 2008 flooding. So it is possible that we did put some rock back. Kathy uh, Gollenbelt Road is that a Class A road? Yes, that that's a normal gravel road in the county that we maintain. <clears throat> Is there anyone else that would like to address the board on this issue? I, um, Gary Birch, um, 4935 Young Road, Waterloo, and uh, with Flyers Airfield. Um, my biggest concern with this issue is just a safety um, and damage to the property, but safety issue. Uh, we have had uh, quite a bit of experience with the with the mudders coming in and getting onto the airfield and uh, creating uh, some hazardous conditions for the pilots that do fly out there. Um, you know, if you get a rut and you, you hit that on landing, um, you can lose landing gear and, and uh, it can be a very dangerous situation. We invested several thousand dollars uh, in concrete barriers um, last year to try and cut down on the problems that we've been experiencing. And it has helped, um, but it has not eliminated it completely. And you know, we're going to have to look at some additional steps there regardless. But there's definitely um, a, a lot of trouble with with the road, as was uh, expressed previously. So you think if this is vacated and, and barriers are put up, that'll eliminate that problem? I think it'll definitely help. Yeah, I, I mean, no one can say with certainty what people are going to do, sure. but uh, certainly additional deterrence would would be helpful. Thank you. You got cameras Thank out you. there, Gary? Um, we do not. Uh, you know, the neighbors that are close by uh, keep a pretty good eye on it. And in fact, we did catch a couple of, of kids a few years ago, um, uh, you know, there was no restitution that came out of it or anything, but uh, I don't know if they're still participating in the activities or not. But thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else? Good morning. Good morning. Um, as it pertains to Weeden Road and the activities of mudding, Weeden Road wins hands down. <laughs> And the reason is, is it's the perfect combination of mud and access. Um, so of any place in the county that we have problems with those kinds of activities, Whedon Road is the worst. I would guess probably uh, over the last five to seven years, 50% um, of all the folks that participate in the mudding activities, we end up having to extract either out of the fields, out of the roadway itself, out of the flyers field, um, and they all get charged criminally. 
So uh, it, is a, it is an issue. It does occupy sheriff's office time in response to those kinds of activities. The fact that it's currently a level B road does not prevent, it, or prevent uh, people from accessing that. And nine times out of 10, they're accessing it when the conditions are right to be able to participate in that kind of activity that doesn't benefit the road or the county. Any questions for me? <clears throat> Mr. Pierce, so thank you. Good morning. Uh, Joe Patava, 5801 right. Wyden Road. Um, I guess, I mean, I was here the last work session we had, and uh, I'm not denying the fact that Wyden Road at that point floods. That's, that's a fact. Um, and it's not always the rain in Waterloo that causes the flooding on the Cedar River. Um, many times it's the rain up north, I mean, even as far as Minnesota, that affects us. But I get the fact that it, it very often is muddy when it floods. I, I get that. But the fact is it's almost 2,000 feet further from the river. Um, our point is it's the last chance if something would go wrong. Floods don't always come as a flash flood on a river like that. They, they slowly come up. I don't want to say slowly, but slowly compared to flash flood. Um, Gallenville Road does flood quicker. It's much closer to the river. Um, as far as the concern of the airport, I, I guess that, to me, that falls on, onto the airport owner to take care of your pilot's landing. Um, most airports that I've seen have fences that surround them to protect the airport from, from such things. Um, the mutters, I mean, I, I get that the sheriff's time is valuable and that, you know, if somewhere else were to go wrong, they're tied up there. But if the county is not liable for anything that happens on a level B road anyway, is it, does, does the sheriff have to pull them out or can they be required to call a tow truck and pay to get their car out and then be criminally charged for that? I'd, and I see if, if you are criminally charging people, they're, eventually they're going to stop or maybe there's going to there, there's going to be new mutters or whatever. But I mean, if, if they're getting fined hundreds or thousands of dollars, whatever the fine is, or, or criminally, I mean, that's going to reduce. I mean, that's that's why we have the sheriff's, that's why we have laws and stuff like that. That's going to reduce those kind of things. So um, I guess that's all I got. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else that'd like to address? You know, approximate cost difference between barricades and, and fencing. Like roughly the same. They could be roughly the same. A gate, we would buy a metal gate that may cost five or mm -hmm. six, seven hundred dollars. Right. The barricade would be, I would think, under five hundred dollars. Yeah. So, so that's more than we spent last year out there. We yes. We spent two hundred fifty dollars last year to maintain it. Approximately. So we're yes. Spend more to close it off for because of mutters. We we did spend more than that on it maintaining it. That was just with the grader going up and down it. Otherwise, uh, we were out there with trucks and graders filling in the holes, the major holes, so we could get up and down it. So we did spend you know a little more than that. But it's the anticipated cost you're looking for the trees and some of those things too as far as maintaining a road out there is clearing those trees and you said at 10 to 15 thousand that's what i would say to, to grow all the trees out to take them out of them. is it necessary to remove the trees yeah why would you why the would trees you? are right next to the road and we're supposed to have about a six foot clear zone going through there and we don't so you only do it once a year take care of the road once a year, what would be the problem of uh, getting through there? As far as grading it once a year, you mean? No, it depends on the year. I mean, yeah. if we can get in there a little more often, we blade it a little more often. It's not always just once a year. Oh. So the clear zone, is that a code thing? The, go ahead. It is, but because because it's a class b road we don't that's what i was going to say necessarily have to maintain to the the specified clear zone in the uh the iowa dot design requirements if you vacated it who'd you vacate it to so we are the county 
is on this our road is there by a permanent easement so in that case we the land would revert back to the landowners on each side of the road what are some of the potential safety hazards for county employees either doing maintaining or also responding to situations out there I don't know as if there's any I don't think it'd be any more of what they do every day say any different than any other day okay have we gotten any vehicles of ours stuck out there no we don't, we don't, out. We don't, go, we don't go out <laughs> we're not mutters no. <laughs> speak for yourself yeah, I'm just I'm just <laughs> Kathy or any of the or any of the residents is this road used at all for emergency vehicles other than sheriff we do not the sheriff doesn't even go down that road I, I'm specifically EMS or fire. They, they'll use on that road. When they run that <laughs> no, we wouldn't. We wouldn't use that uh, that passage to get to Whedon Road or back to no school bus. In the courier, and previously the uh, Whedon Road was used by the But if it's in a mud condition, they wouldn't use it. No. Those vehicles are prone to being stuck. <laughs> so for the most part, too, I think Rotting House probably farms on both sides of the road. So I'm thinking his farm is probably <laughs> what he would continue and, and do in that, that available space. Yes, he's the majority landowner on both sides of the road, and they have told me that they can access their fields from, excuse me, Rotting House on the north, and then as it comes around to Gollenvo from, <coughs> and then if they were farming through that road, then, you know, they would just have a bigger field to, they could still access it from the east. Do you want to speak? Yeah. Please. My name's Connie Patava. And morning. I am good morning. the good morning, the third generation living on the um, Wyden Fishback Farm, and um, I'm here to speak for my mother, 95 years old. Um, not only is the road um, historical, um, I I know that my grandfather uh, was instrumental in helping establish the not only the Wyden Road in that area, but also. Uh, the Gollumbo Road. Um, he, he petitioned to have another access for those homes over on that area. Um, my first recollection of, um, of the importance of that road to my family was back in the 60s when I was a young child and it flooded. And the last, uh, my dad was um, actively farming then and had um, cattle, milk cows, um, pigs, um, and my recollection was standing hand in hand with dad, watching the semi take his um, livestock, and the last access that they had off of that farm was straight down Wyden Road. And um, so it, it, it is very important. Um, yes, flooding comes in many different ways. We all know that, and we all know how terrible flooding is. But um, when you look at um, the times that it actually floods, and, and recently we've had, what, a 500-year flood and a 100-year flood, those are terrible. They, um, not only was the county fixing holes in the road, but you should have seen the um, craters that were in the farm fields that the farmers had to fix and repair from, from the, the swirling of, of the um, river that was overflowing. But um, it, uh, it is the last access um, that we can um, get out of, of that farm. Uh, Millerdale, um, that area of houses and people that live there, um, they've also come down that way too as a last resort to get out or as Alma Huck said, she came down the bike trail. And um, so um, 
in, in bad times, yes, it, it floods. Um, in torrential rains, Lighten Road does, uh, does get, um, there's holes in it. There's, there's um, different areas that are susceptible. They must be lower um, that, that fill with water and, and are, are mud spots. But uh, the rest of the time, um, I've used that road. I, I drive down that road, um, you know, um, frequently. And I, I travel for work. And when I come home, uh, I'll come home that road to see mom. And uh, so anyway, we're, we're asking that you at least keep it uh, as it is, as a Class B road. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else? And we had this on just for discussion. Um, I was just going to comment to Grant. I guess we had about six or seven emails that we've received in the last few weeks, too, that we can get you the names and addresses of those individuals, too, for the record. You want me to read them or the, the names? Or oh, if you, you yes, just, if you've got them. Yeah. They're different than what Kathy reported on. Well, just give their name and address. It's uh, Alma Huck, Rebecca Hergert, Dwayne Wester, Roger Calson, Roger Jorgensen. These are all in favor of closing the road. In addition to that, I can give you some other names. David Harms, Scott Morris. Um, why don't you get me the list in a few more right. minutes? Okay, will do, thank you. I think there was, <clears throat> I haven't had time to go through all the emails this morning since I was gone yesterday, but I think there were at least one that was in favor of closing the emails, yes. or in favor of keeping it open. Okay, um, any reports, information from the board? I want to say I had the opportunity last week to go and tour uh, Sunny Crest in Dubuque and really great facility. I hadn't been there since I think I went with my Boy Scout troop as a kid. Um, but one, one interesting idea that they had that I'd um, like to explore more is that they don't use nursing agencies, but one of the things that they have in addition to stuff we've talked about is what they call a, a PRN pool. And, the, and those are nurses that um, used to work at Sunnycrest but have gone on to work at the hospitals, but they maintain a pool of them that they can call up. Um, so they're paying a, a lower rate than they're paying uh, the nursing agencies, and they've got people that have experience already working there, and I, I thought it was a really, a really good idea worth exploring. Thank you. Thanks, Chris. Thanks. Uh, no other information? Motion to adjourn. Second. A motion and second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 We're adjourned.